What my thought was originally is I wanted to build a case about the statistics of children today and also the statistics about adults today and talk about the issues with our food and our chemicals, but I'd like to go out of order and skip all the way to the end and then come back. And I'd like to ask a different question um, because although a lot of this seems very, very dreary and difficult to listen to and negative, there's actually something very interesting. What Brian and Anna Marie and Brigitte have said is you could opt out of this, not a little bit. They're not saying there's a way to slightly reduce your chances of type 2 diabetes. They're saying there's a way to opt out. They're saying they, there is a way to completely, completely be on a different path. Not like, you know, reduce your chances a little. They're saying there's a way you could have nothing to do with this whole disease thing. Completely, completely be in a different situation for you and your family, which is something you hear nowhere. No one tells you. Everyone says that this is a tough situation and it's tough. They're saying that's not the case at all. They've had experience where you can completely be on a different track and have nothing to do with obesity, with type 2 diabetes, with heart disease, and with almost all other health issues. So maybe you could explain what for the last 40 years all of you have done that allows a person who is interested in opting out completely, um, what would it take? What can they do to have a nothing to do with any of these health issues. What is the program? What's the plan? Um, what should they be eating tomorrow for breakfast? How does someone say, I want nothing to do with this, I've heard enough, tell me the solution? So uh, let's say I go to the supermarket and um, I skip all the aisles except the fresh. Okay? So now I choose things from the fresh and I choose uh, as many leafy greens as I can to make a beautiful salad. I uh, f have maybe avocados, I get some organic seeds or some organic nuts, and I, um, I start that way. And that could be maybe, yes, maybe not the breakfast, maybe that will be my lunch. So what if I have just some organic fresh fruit for breakfast now? And that's it. I don't combine it with my uh, grains, my cereals. I don't combine it with anything, but I just eat a fresh fruit. And I make a big uh, jug of uh, a lemon that I squeeze in, and you can buy some sweetener called stevia, which is a, in the licorice family and is not a sugar that anybody, even with cancer, diabetes, I can, oh, everybody can have it. So I can squeeze that, put some stevia in, and maybe some cayenne to make me warm, especially if you live up north. And I start that morning like that. And um, so go for the fresh, start buying more fresh, skip the other aisles, because there's nothing really good there, and especially the chemicals when it comes to household products. I have to hold my nose when I go by there, <laughs> it's so toxic. So you want to buy good household products that your kids actually could eat if it happened by mistake. So, you know, the, every store has fresh foods and uh, has organic by now, like you said, Bridget, it's, it's available. It's really available. You have uh, farmer's markets, which if you live in a town where you have farmer's market every Saturday or Sunday, you take advantage of that and support those farmers that come with fresh stuff that they just picked. It, it's amazing. So I would start with getting the fresh. And when you take the kids shopping, mm -hmm. uh, give them the assignment in the produce aisle, like, I need you to pick out two red foods that you're willing to eat and yeah. two orange foods and have yeah. them do the rainbow. You never see a kid having a temper tantrum in the produce aisle. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> you're right. right. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, you know, start a little garden with them because if they can see that miracle mm -hmm. of life, yeah. of like, wow, I grew a carrot or a tomato, they're more likely to eat it than if they're not connected to it at all. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to give an example, I reported recently a Princeton University study where they looked at the brains of uh, people, children, adults, uh, on sugar, heroin, and cocaine. And what do you think was the most addictive? Sugar. Sugar. So it brought it to mind, I mean, you do see kids even at the natural food markets jumping up and down and screaming when mom says you can't have that cereal. Because the cereal's what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, illegal the, drugs for kids. It is illegal drugs, yes. it really is. The, the thing about this chronic illness epidemic is that if you really want to unpack it, there's probably 100,000 variables in our daily life that are contributing and making our, us and our kids sick. Right. So for somebody who's coming to this concept new, it's like a deer in headlights, like you want me to change what? <laughs> I, and like your question, what's for breakfast, is probably the best question ever because it's like, I got to put one foot in front of the other and what do I do tomorrow now that I've learned all this doom and gloom and this is awful. Um, but the way I simplify it, because I think about all the things that I've changed in my life since I've had this awakening, because I haven't always been this way. I had, this was an education for me to learn how to live in a healthful way. And you can understand 100,000 things that are threats to your life, EMFs, GMOs, antibiotics, <laughs> uh, toxic factory food. I mean, I could go on for, for anyone on this yes. panel could sit here Showers. and give you a book <laughs> or 10 books on all the things that are toxic to you. But how do you start? And I'll tell you a great word that I love that um, was, is the title of a book written by a man named Jeff Leach, who um, founded the American Gut Project, which looks at the microbiome and how that impacts the hu human health. In other words, all the microbes that live in and around your body and how you that impacts your health. He just published a book not too long ago called Rewild. Rewild. And the reason why I love that is because in one word, it says what you need to do to live optimally and most healthfully, which is to try and reintegrate yourself, your life, your family, into the wilderness, natural, everything that human beings have grown for thousands of years to, to adapt to. We have lived in a synthetic world for this much time, a very short period of time in the, in the span of, of human history. So when you take that word rewild, that means to think about all the ways that you could live naturally, get natural sunlight instead of artificial light, um, eat natural fresh foods instead of processed packaged foods, have your feet touch the earth, dig in the soil. I mean, these are all things that are somebody who was, it would be, it was an animal or lived in the wilderness would do. So if you just put that as your mind frame, I am going to rewild. And that means basically kick to the curb all the synthetic and um, all the toxic things that are new to the human experience. And this way you can save a lot of time cleaning your kids up all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it's great for kids to be dirty. It, it, it is. It really it is. is. I mean, you get the whole microbial exposure. Yeah. And we used to be. I, absolutely. Now mothers are, are neurotic. They clean every two minutes they're cleaning the kids with these wipey things. How about those wipey things? That's right. Oh, God. And, and I think a lot of parents are worried about their kids being bullied or are, are being pressured by other kids to do certain things. I, I, and I know that it happens, but then it depends on what we, how we educated our kids at home. And the base, the foundation they had, and the strength they got at home, they, won't, they won't, will not really care about that uh, part, that the food looks different, because yeah. our kids went through that. You know, our kids thought the way we lived was normal, and they used to come home when they were two and three, and began to speak and said, you know, people really kill animals and eat them? <laughs> they take eggs out of little chickens and they eat them, you know, it was like a phenomenon to them. It was like perplexing to these kids. Well, and, and we always had dogs, so when we go in the supermarket and they see meat, they're like, wow, a lot of dog food here. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one of them said that to me, he's like, Four. this is the dog food section? And we said, yes. Notice that people eat a lot of dog food over there. <laughs> And, and by the way, they've raised, uh, we're so proud of them all, all of our grandchildren are being raised this way mm -hmm. because of what you said, Bridget, is mm -hmm. correct, what you're saying. Educate, educate. These are, in my view, my best friends in the world are my children, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm a father and they know what I like and don't like and I say no enough. But the reality is, if I can't teach these best friends of mine what to do, and respect them and honor them. Well, no wonder you have children that are lost today and need gangs and they're fighting and bullying people, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. So there are a lot of people that have heard you say that avoiding animal products, I, they've heard Brian and Anna Marie say that, um, is something that you strongly recommend. But in terms of the people listening and watching who tomorrow are gonna have lunch and dinner, specifically, as specifically as you can, 
what are the instructions? If they want to opt out of these health issues, what is, what should they eat for lunch and dinner as specifically as you can? Oh, so, you know, when you're dealing with uh, live food like we do, and, and we want to sprout, we want food to be as alive as possible, we'll start a little bit ahead. Um, and um, we can, of course, buy a lot of sprouts. So when you first start, let's say that uh, I want to go and buy sprouts. And there are a lot of sprout growers. I can buy sunflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, pea sprouts, buckwheat sprouts. And I can uh, bring them home and make a salad with lettuce and cucumbers and, and let my kids uh, choose things that I want to have in that salad, too. The thing is, um, when I'm going raw, I also need to make juice. I need to really saturate my body with nourishment. And so, and juicing is fun. I think everybody likes to make juice, but most of us didn't know that sugar was a big part in carrots <laughs> or apples. So we, we really, if we want to start the kids off and not be sugar addicts, like we all were born to be, um, you know, then, uh, we stay out of the sweet um, vegetables and we don't mix fruit in with that. So we just let the kids make the juice and um, put the sprouts in the juicer and the celery cucumber and the dandelions and the arugulas and the collard greens and the cabbage and it's fun to drink. So we, we find that and, and especially when, when somebody has a problem, they really need to be saturated with nourishment. And you can see at the Institute, we do blood tests the first week and the last week. It is amazing how willing the body is to change when it's saturated with nourishment. And supplementation like B12, which has to be from bacterial B12, it's, um, you know, a lot of kids are lacking there. A lot of kids are lacking good omega-3, which plants, wild plants, have more than any other plant. Yep. And, um, you know, so you're, you're adding live food into a salad and start with that. And, you know, whatever you had in your lifestyle before, you're probably not going to just leave it. Maybe you add this to what you had and slowly but surely it takes the And there's two kinds of, of, of answers here. If you're uh, coming from a family like I did, a loving, supportive family mm -hmm. that had no clue on food. Uh, you don't go from, we're not going to eat fast food burgers anymore right. and, and let's eat only salad with sprouts in it. It's right. not going to work. So you have to go out and find the quinoa burger, the non-soy, the non-gluten burgers. And that's the transition for you. If you want to be pure, you want to live a maximum lifestyle uh, and get there quick and detoxify the body to get rid of the chemicals and the disease-causing uh, concerns, then you would actually make a burger out of sprouted, dehydrated nuts. And your dehydrators become your ovens. Uh, even myself, I was a, a, a young man, but a, uh, you know, not much more than a teenager when I began all of this, and I would not have survived I would not have survived without the um, dehydrator. The dehydrator made the food look like, feel like, and taste like the cooked food I was familiar with. So I gave up potato chips. I needed something that tasted like a potato chip that was raw and healthy and alive. Uh, you know, even if you aren't going to eat a raw food diet, now they make chips out of dehydrated peas. They're, they're cooked, they're dead, but who cares? Much better than a potato chip. Or kale chips in the dehydrator yes. are wonderful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And sprouting is a wonderful uh, chore that the kids can take charge of. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites is um, sprouting sunflower seeds in the tray. Mm -hmm. And I see kids who don't usually like vegetables that much will like spray them with a water bottle and cut them with a pair of scissors and eat every one. They'll both stand on a step stool. Um, and the other thing is rather than just saying, well, this is how we do it, we want to be healthy. You know, I think if you let kids know this is going to give you more beauty, more intelligence, better grades, better athletic ability, you kind of have to sell it to them that there's a reason for all of it. Mm -hmm. And one um, last thing I'd like to share for now is um, when my kids were teenagers, I, I see so many young adults 
who go off to college and they don't know how to make any food. They graze. And so we would have a thing at our house where whatever cookbook we were into at the moment, you know, whether it was a macrobiotic or raw or 10 talents or something. The all hot dog cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we didn't, we didn't have that one. But I would say, um, you know, it's expensive to take a, a family of four or six out to dinner. So, like, you to pick out what you're going to make. Give me the list, and I will reward you. I'll give you $20 for making the dinner. And they would really, you know, one at a time, knock themselves out to really uh, make something gourmet. And the kudos they would get, like, this is wonderful. This is so great. And both of them have grown up to be, you know, really wonderful in food preparation. And mm -hmm. one has even written a, a, her own cookbook. So, wow. um, and I, I sometimes, maybe it was bribery a little bit, but I like to say it's rewards. I would reward my kids for reading books that I thought were important. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I really think if you read, if you read this or if you take this class, I'll give you five dollars so they could earn some money and yet you're gonna have to give them money anyway so I felt at least yeah. I can <laughs> exactly have some right. <laughs> influence to get them to imprint on things and put that on their hard drive so good ideas yeah now most kids spend four to five hours a day in front of either TV or computer uh, 45 hours four to like five yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and you know Inactivity is a big part of uh, obesity, asthma, cardiovascular system problem, you name it. And, um, you know, it's, as a parent, we kind of have to shut those things off and, and say, okay, we're going out, we're going to go for a bicycle tour. And, and kids love it. They, they just are waiting for us to, to take that uh, part and, and get them going. And, um, you know, having kids that are now you know, going through, uh, been through high school, college, and, you know, it, it is a lot of things that are on the computer, which our older kids didn't have to do, deal with until they came to college. Now everything is computer through the whole time. So they are so, they are like brainwashed that this is what we do. All the homework is done. I have to sit in front of a computer, and when I get home, I have four hours studies, and that's in front of a computer. So, uh, and uh, then I want to have fun, then I want to see TV shows. So, there's no time for exercise. I tell my kids, yes, you can watch The Little Mermaid for the 150th time, but you're going to watch it with the, you're going to watch it in French. Yes. Or Spanish. <laughs> and you're going to knit or crochet because at Waldorf School, you know, they teach you have to knit.